Okay, now to some of the actual inspection type work that you do. The most basic is gonna be visual spectrum work. It's with almost any drone can fly. It will have a visual camera or a GB camera. Um, get used to working with them a lot, even if you're gonna be doing primarily um, infrared work or multispectral agricultural work, whatever it is, just get used to flying a drone, taking close pictures of anything from different angles. This is gonna be by far the most common type of inspection that you'll do, even for high-end work. I would get used to also doing some mapping with it, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, we'll start right now. So this is known as photogrammetry, which is really using images to take measurements. You can see the image on the left is an image that's been used to draw up engineering diagrams or they're overlaid on top of it. Um, the same thing on the right, drawing, you'll typically find in AutoCAD. Any sort of engineering work, they're used to working with these types of drawings. Uh, the benefit that drones provide is they are not used to receiving a full high quality visual map which you are able to generate. Um, the point of this is not just image stitching, it is to create fully scaled orthorectified maps which look exactly like Google satellite imagery, just much higher quality. You can also generate 3D models with this stuff and some of the industry words that you'll see if you're not used to them, a digital surface model, DSM, digital terrain model, DTM, contour lines, topographical maps, uh, this is a great industry to get into if you can do any sort of surveying work, but it does require a bit of knowledge. So don't expect that you can go learn how to use drone deploy for 30 minutes and then go out and do a major surveying job. You will want to know the industry pretty well before you get started, especially if the client is going to have requirements like uh, we need surveying accuracy of plus or minus three centimeters. You need to know how you can create that and how you can deliver it. You'll need to know a lot about ground control points, all sorts of things. Even if you're not willing to go to that extent or to learn how to do it just yet, it is a good idea to play around with some of the free mapping softwares that you can find. They'll have free trials and you can just see what the results look like so you understand what drones can provide if someone's very interested. Moving on to infrared. This is another common sensor that you'll have on a drone, um, goes beyond visual spectrum. The main reason why you would use one is looking for heat loss in buildings, looking for water infiltration, um, and then also in the renewable industry, it's used heavily when solar farm inspections, you can see the right, you can very clearly see that there are two offline strings of modules that are much hotter than the surrounding ones because they're not functional. It's not converting all the sunlight into energy and it's just heating them up. Same idea with building inspections. If there's gonna be water damage, water infiltration, missing insulation, any sort of that stuff, you can see early in the day or late in the day when the sun is rising or setting, it will cool down and heat up at different rates. And the small differences are noticeable on a sensitive enough thermal camera. And you can do a full roof report that includes both visual spectrum analysis of everything, and then also includes a thermal analysis. This is another very useful tool to have in your arsenal if you're gonna be doing drone work, but keep in mind, all thermal cameras are expensive. Even the cheapest ones that you'll find they're gonna be able to do this type of work will be a few thousand. Um, some of the higher end ones, if you wanna do any sort of drone mapping with thermal images, are gonna be a minimum of like eight to 10,000. So it's not a small investment, but it does pay off if you can get enough work lined up to do this type of stuff.